Welcome to Thanatos Pharmaceuticals, the header on the packet read. I only interviewed with one person, and they made an offer to double my previous salary, so it only made sense to take the job. Two weeks after accepting the offer, I found myself in a little room where I had been asked to wait and look over the welcome packet as the hiring manager prepared the orientation presentation. I had never heard of the company before, even with 15 years of experience in the medical industry. But they assured me that was due to the sensitive nature of their business and countless government contracts. The first page of the welcome packet contained a pretty standard letter from the CEO, thanking me for joining the team and promising my time with the company would be some of the best years of my life. There were a few pages with various facts about the Nottos, and then some basic company policies that I would be asked to follow as an employee. There wasn't a whole lot that stuck out as anything to be concerned about, except for a brief paragraph under a section on working conditions. All employees are responsible for their own safety while on the lower levels of the facility. While we do employ armed guards for emergencies, they are not authorized to access floors B9 through B13 without prior consent of management. Please ensure you are following all posted rules and procedures when on these floors to ensure the safety of yourself and your fellow employees. What were they keeping on the lower floors that would be that dangerous? This wasn't the first place I'd worked with guards, but it seemed really odd to restrict them from entire floors of the building. That section aside, most of the rest of the packet was pretty standard. The Nautilus is a smoke-free facility, wear your ID badge at all times, Stay in your assigned work area, all stuff I had seen in one way or another before. I had just finished browsing the packet when the HR manager came into the room. Hello James, I'm Vanessa. I'll be onboarding you today. Is there anything you need before we get started? Her smile couldn't have been any wider if she tried, and there was a glow about her that was almost off-putting. I think I'm ready. No one was able to tell me how long I should expect to be here today, though, and I was just wondering what time to let my ride know to pick me up. This shouldn't be more than three or four hours. With the facility tour, you should be done by 4 p.m., she replied as she sat in the chair across from me. Shall we get started? The bulk of the orientation was the same as every other company I had worked for over the years. We covered benefits, pay, setting up direct deposit, and filling out tax forms. Someone from IT came in around lunchtime to help me get my computer and make sure everything was set up properly. Any concerns I had over the lower levels melted away as the day progressed. The final part of onboarding was the facility tour. This consisted of showing me around the main areas of the building, including my workspace and what floors I would be working on. I was to be part of a team developing new drugs to help fight cancer, and I would mainly be working on the upper floors. As we climbed on the elevator and headed back down to the ground level so I could leave for the day, I noticed some odd symbols on the directory next to the buttons for the levels below B3. What's with the basement levels? Some kind of secret code? I asked. Vanessa turned to look at me, her smile less pronounced than it had been most of the day. The basement levels are off limits to most employees. They are reserved for top secret projects. Please just focus on the floors you are assigned to. Her eyes were almost hollow as she spoke. Not wanting to push the subject, I kept quiet for the remainder of the ride, thanking her for helping me to get onboarded. I left the building as quickly as I could and found my friend waiting for me in the parking lot. I was excited to finally get started the next day, but I couldn't get the thought about the lower levels out of my head. I had never worked for any organization that was so secretive about entire floors without providing some kind of information about them. Then there were the symbols on the elevator. They didn't look like any language I had seen. Were they some kind of code? Sleep didn't come easily that night. I tossed and turned as I wondered what my first full day would be like. It sounds silly, but I always have the same issue when starting a new job with a new company. The questions swirl in my mind about what my co-workers will be like, how I'll like the job. The addition of imagining what could be on the lower floors didn't help matters any. I eventually drifted off, 
catching at least a couple of hours of sleep before my alarm went off at 7 a.m. Begrudgingly, I climbed out of bed and got ready for the day before making my way downstairs and hailing a cab, hoping the rain that was coming down in buckets wasn't going to be some kind of omen for how the day would go. Paying the driver as we pulled up to the door, I climbed out and ran the few feet through the downpour to the revolving door that marked the beginning of my day. I smiled at the receptionist as I shook the water from my hair and she gave a small wave as I showed my badge before going to the elevator, making my way up to the fifth floor. After successfully finding my desk, I realized no one else was in yet, so I decided to grab a cup of coffee from the break room while I waited for my team to arrive. With a caffeine-infused breakfast in hand, I logged into my computer and started going through some of the welcome emails that had arrived in my inbox overnight. I was so focused that I didn't hear the footsteps of one of my teammates walking up behind me. You must be James. Welcome to the team, he said, slapping my shoulder and causing me to nearly jump out of my chair. Oh shit. Y yeah, <laughs> I'm James. Sorry, I was just checking my email. I didn't know whenever, when to expect everyone else to get here. I should be the one apologizing, he chuckled. I have a bad habit of sneaking up on people. Lee says I'm a ninja, but I think it's just the carpet in here that drowns out all the noise. I'm Chuck, by the way. Good to meet you, Chuck. And I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I'll sprinkle some chips on the floor or something so I can hear you coming in the future, I said, shaking his hand as we both laughed. The rest of the team trickled in over the following hour. I've never really been good with names. So, as much as I tried to remember who was who, the only people I rarely remembered on that first day were Chuck the Ninja and Lee, who turned out to be the team leader. It took a couple of weeks to get acclimated to the new role, but I learned the ins and outs pretty quickly, and by the end of the third week, I was going full steam on a couple of projects. I found myself so engrossed in the work that I soon forgot about the lower levels that had been so important the first couple of days in my mind. It would be about three months before I thought about them again, thanks to a shift in my job. <clears throat> James, come here for a second. Lee's eyes had bags under them, and his voice was more ragged than usual. I followed him into his office, and he shut the door behind us before taking a seat at his desk. I sat in the chair opposite him, my stomach turning in knots over what he could possibly want. Did I do something wrong? I asked. Something wrong? Oh, no, you've been outstanding. As a matter of fact, the company has asked me to offer you an advancement. This will be a new position on the team as we move forward with testing some of the drugs we've developed over the past few years. You'll be the liaison between us and... His voice trailed off, and I could tell he was trying to find the right phrasing. Certain departments on the lower levels, he finished. I leaned back in my chair unable to breathe as he stared at me. The chance to find out what was on the lower levels was intriguing, but I wasn't sure I was ready for a new role. Why me? And why now? I asked. Honestly, your performance has been top-notch. You are the newest member of the team, and yet you've taken on more than any of the senior guys since day one. We've reached a place in our development that we need to start the testing phase, so that we can get into clinical trials, and they told me to pick the best person we had to do the job. I don't know what to say. Thank you for the opportunity. Can I think it over? What exactly does this new position entail? Yeah, you can think it over, but I need an answer by tomorrow, so we can get the ball rolling. You'll be working between our team and the testing teams on the lower levels. Basically, you'll oversee the tests and make sure everything goes all right, then report back so that we can tweak the formula as needed. I can't tell you what to expect down there, as I've never been down there myself. All I know is it's top secret, and you'll have some pretty strict protocols to follow. I thanked him and told him I would have an answer by the next day, before making my way out of the office and heading home. I knew I wanted to accept the position, but I also worried about whether I would be able to handle the task. After tossing and turning for a few hours, I finally came to a decision and drifted off to a dream about what I might find as I ventured into the belly of the beast in the coming weeks. The next few days consisted of a lot of new training material, signing a lot of paperwork related to keeping secrets and sharing a celebratory drink with my team. 
I found out I would be spending most of my time on level B5, though I may have to visit other levels as the testing progressed. I wasn't sure what to expect that first day I ventured into the basement, but if I had known what I was going to find, I wouldn't have taken the position. Level B5 was the initial testing phase. Historically, many medications meant for humans have been tested on mice and even dogs or primates, depending on the drug. I expected to find caged animals and people in white coats, but as the doors opened on the elevator, I was surprised to see a circular, almost prison-like room with guards in the middle and thick metal doors lining the walls. Each door had a number on it, from 1 to 20 and the only sound to be heard was the whirring of computer fans and the occasional moan from one of the cell doors. As I stepped off the elevator, one of the guards turned and greeted me with a smile. Good morning, Mr. Allen. We're all set to begin testing in cell one whenever you're ready. Sorry, I wasn't really told what to expect down here. Are we testing on humans? I asked. The guard sighed. <sighs> They never tell you all what's up, do they? The subject we're testing on are technically humans, but they're the worst of the worst from society. They all owe a debt for one crime or another and volunteer to take part in these tests as a way to pay their balance, he said, a frown replacing the smile as he spoke. So they're criminals? I'm not sure this is ethical. My heart was trying to escape my chest as I processed what was going on. Like I said, they've all signed on voluntarily. Once the tests are over and their debt is clear, they're free to go, he said, a smile returning to his face. I really wasn't sure what to think at the moment. Human trials, even this early, weren't entirely unheard of, but it was really troubling that no one had mentioned this before I showed up for the first day. Resolving to get more clarity later on, I thanked the guard and told him I was ready to proceed. As cell one opened, I was greeted by the sight of a man strapped to a bed, his mouth held shut with a gag. Moving in and setting up my supplies on the table next to the bed, I began making notes on my clipboard about his current condition, taking information about him from the label attached to his shirt. He looked mostly healthy, considering his state at the time, but his label did mention that he was suffering from lung cancer. Once everything was recorded in my notes, I went about preparing the drug and injecting it into the IV that had been pre-placed in his right arm. I waited in the room for the required 30 minutes to watch for any immediate side effects and then retreated back to the main room with the guards. Okay, so he has to be monitored and checked for the next 24 hours. The drug should start to take effect in the next week and I'll be down to check on him daily. If anything happens, his vitals change or he becomes unresponsive or shows signs of some ne negative effect, call me immediately, I said. The guards acknowledged my request and I made my way back upstairs, intent on getting more answers from anyone I could find that might know about what was going on. The only person I could think to go to was Lee, but he'd already told me he was unaware of what was going on in the basement. I decided to try going to Lee's boss, who I'd never really met, but who I was sure would have some idea. Knocking on the door labeled Dr. Shrew, I heard some movement on the other side before a gruff voice beckoned me to enter. Opening the door slowly, I found the room to be rather dimly lit, with most of the light coming from a desk lamp of a man who looked to be in his mid-sixties, with gray hair and sunken eyes. Ah, oh, Mr. Allen, I quite expected you would be finding your way up here this afternoon. You have questions. He lit a cigarette as he spoke. I have a few, yes. Nobody told me we'd be doing tests on humans. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with the setup. I assure you, there is nothing to worry about. Every person we bring in or take part in the tests of our drugs are willing to take the risks. Many have come before you, and all of them questioned it at first. It's only natural, given the weight our society places on human lives. I just have a hard time imagining they were truly able to consent being tested on if they were from prisons. Was it really a choice if they were seen as expendable in the first place? 
My face was starting to feel warm and my heart was racing again. Some of them are from prisons, yes. Most of those were serving life sentences or sitting on death row for unspeakable acts. We give them a second chance. When the testing is over, we set them free. He leaned into the light, revealing a scar on his left cheek as he smiled. Does every level of the basement contain the same thing? I asked. In a way... Everything we do here is for the betterment of mankind, Mr. Allen. The choice of whether you want to continue after today is yours, but I would ask that you give it at least a month. When you see the amazing things we are doing, you'll realize the bigger picture is much more important than a few prisoners. <laughs>